Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> In the name of our risen Savior, my dear friends, they come in all sizes and shapes. In a sense, you can tell a person's occupation by looking at them. If they are large, well-muscled, then you could maybe surmise that that person was a carpenter or a farmer, or maybe a commercial fisherman, and my father-in-law was all three. As you grow older, they gain spots from the sun. They can become gnarled and arthritic. There can be surgery for carpal tunnel syndrome. They sweat. They are subject to cold. And they shake. Now, is there anyone here that doesn't know what I'm speaking about? If, if, if you are unsure and need some more hints, just raise your arm. <laughs> it's hands, isn't it? <laughs> I'm talking about hands. On that first evening after Easter, Jesus appeared to the disciples who were huddled together in fear in that upper room. He spoke to them. But what was it that convinced them that he was alive and that the resurrection was for real? His hands. See his hands. And I'd like to use that as our theme following the outline that you have in your worship folder for this evening. And there are just three simple thoughts. First, Jesus showed them his hands. Let me just refer again to these opening words of the gospel lesson from John chapter 20 that says on the evening of that day the first day of the week the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews Jesus came and stood among them and said to them peace be with you and when he had said this he showed them his hands and his side then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. You see, Jesus didn't hide his hands behind his back, being ashamed of the disfigurement that occurred. He didn't just show them one hand. He showed them both hands. And let me just clarify something that I'm sure that you have heard a number of times. But in the ancient world, the wrist was a part of the hand. When I saw the Starlight, 
that uh, came through the email this week. I said, uh-oh. That hole in the middle should have been blackened. There should have been a red dot right here because that's where the nails went into Jesus' hands. There was a modern artist, an artist by the name of Harry Anderson, who painted a picture of Jesus sitting in a garden surrounded by children. He was gesturing with his hands. And one of the children, as only a child could do, said to Jesus in this picture, what happened to your hand? And that was the title of Harry Anderson's picture. What happened to your hand? We know what happened to Jesus' hands. Soldiers took nails and drove them through his hands. Can you imagine? Here was Jesus with the patabellum laying on the ground as the soldiers stretched out his hands and drove nails similar to these through his hands. Who, who would ever want to drive nails through those hands? Why, they were hands that healed the sick, that restored sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, raised the dead, touched lepers. And yet, the legionnaires stilled those hands with a nail and a hammer. Back in 1996, that Hobby Lobby began putting full page pictures ads into every major newspaper in the United States. This is one of those full page ads from 2006. And if you were to ever come to my man cave in the basement, you would see numerous pictures like this framed as a result of Hobby Lobby and their Christian witness. Romans 4.25, by the way, the words printed here. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Isn't that very ironic? That he who grew up in a carpenter's shop helping his father Joseph succumb to death as a result of a hammer and nails. But I want you to know that those marks are more than just for identification. They were marks of love. For this same 
Jesus. As we know from John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus came to be our Savior. Our first parents, Adam and Eve, there in the Garden of Eden, set it all in motion when they sinned and they rebelled against God. But God immediately promised a Messiah, someone who would deliver them and us from our sins. The Bible says that God made him, Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And it all happened on that Friday we call good. Jesus, suspended on that cross of his, took your sin and mine. He took them. He died for them. And as a result, your sins are forgiven. That's why we start our service with that particular confession, your sins are forgiven. Now you heard this particular Bible passage any number of times during the service for Officer Tally. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Officer Talley laid down his life on that day. Jesus died for you. I want you to read in his hands the rescue that occurred on that Friday we call good. Your sins are forgiven. And for all that, the Bible says God raised that great son of his from the dead, giving him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now that leads us to a second thought as I printed out for you from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. We see his hands through the eyes of faith. Though we have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your soul. We see his hands through the eyes of faith. And one day, we're going to see those hands up close and personal. Will it be when God draws that indelible line under your life and mine? Or will it be when this world comes to an end? In either case, Jesus is going to stretch out those nail-scarred hands to you. And he's going to say to you, come, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. My friends, that takes faith. Faith 
to believe that. And that's the faith that I pray our Lord, through his Holy Spirit, will work in your hearts this evening. You see, by faith, we have a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. This was the ad of Hobby Lobby this past Sunday. And you will get a printed version of this, eight and a half by 11, as you leave this evening, one to a family. A living hope. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And that comes from 1 Peter as well, chapter 1. We come now to the third point of this outline. On that day, we're going to show him our hands. We will show him our hands. The cross mutilated hands of Jesus as they reach out to us and we reach up to him Reminds me of the hymn and the words of Augustus Toplady from the Rock of Ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Nothing in my hands I bring, only to thy cross I cling. And let me just say another poet by the name of John Richard Moreland, has expressed it so beautifully. He says, the hands of Christ seem very frail, for they were broken by a nail. But only they reach heaven at last, whom these frail, broken hands hold fast. That's my hope. As Jesus reaches out to me on that day, and that's what I pray for each of you, and now, on that day, we're going to show Jesus our hands. In verse 30, now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. We're going to show him our hands. Francis Havergal wrote that hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be, Consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love. And we also sing in the words of the hymn, now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices. Well, who are the pierced hands of today? Just think for a moment how you can serve this Jesus. The pierced hands of the day are like those of Simon of Cyrene, who carried that patabellum as Jesus struggled and fell to the ground. You can carry a cross for someone else. The pierced hands of today. Make a phone call to the shut-ins those who need encouragement. You can write notes 
to individuals who as well need encouraging. You can give that pat on the back for those who need one. You can work with the orphan grain train right here at Epiphany Lutheran Church. So many things. Oh, what if you were the person who takes the steering wheel to bring someone to church? As I saw these two ladies come through the door. You can help a neighbor when he or she needs it. You can play with the little children. You can make things for others. These are the pierced hands of today. When we show God our hands, will he be able to see that host of activities from your hands? My friends, let his nail-scarred hands be the pierced hands that you see today. Guide your hands into more self-sacrificing service.